Chairman, and uh, welcome, Madam Secretary. I have a question about the cost of our foreign operations. Uh, we are now in the midst of a financial crisis. We have a heavy burden of debt. We know what debt can do. Greece is experiencing uh, that type of problem. And we could reach that problem, I believe, if we continue to do what we are doing. The international affairs budget uh, 10 years ago was $23 billion, now it's $54. That is a tremendous increase, and that is not all from this administration, obviously. Uh, but during that same period of time, the real wages of uh, most American workers has, has gone down. And uh, the unemployment rate now, according to the Labor Department, the underemployment is, uh, is 20 percent. So this is, this is nothing to ignore, and it is related to all our, all our spending. And a lot of Americans can't justify the amount of money we are spending, both in the war effort and in our affairs around the world. And uh, quite frankly, there are some that don't feel a lot safer uh, for it. But there is a human uh, price that we are paying. We have lost over 5,000 Americans uh, in fighting these wars, a thousand, over 1,000 now in Afghanistan alone. There are hundreds of thousands of casualties, of veterans coming back with both physical and mental uh, problems that are going to be they are going to be needing care for many, many uh, years. The cost of all this is probably, in the last 10 years, could easily be $1.5 trillion. And uh, also there is the refugee problem. We have hundreds of thousands of refugees still, uh, uh, you, you know, experience difficulties both in Iraq and in Afghanistan. Just this very last month, 24,000 refugees were added in the invasion of, uh, uh, in, into Afghanistan. And uh, yesterday we had a report from the United Nations that there were 346 children killed in, in Afghanistan. So the violence affects everybody, and that truly uh, is a cost. But the more specific question I have for you is, is one of, of priorities. Uh, Obviously, what's going on here in the Congress is everybody justifies all their spending. You know, people here justify the domestic spending, and people justify the overseas spending and the war spending, and, and they worry about not having enough bipartisanship. I worry about too much because they get together and, and they enjoy spending both places, and nobody cares about the deficit. I want to specifically ask you about the embassy. In, in London, because people can see that and they can feel it. We built an embassy in Baghdad. It cost close to a billion dollars. We built one in, in Kabul, close to a billion dollars, and there's always cost overruns and then the maintenance. It's very, very expensive. I think the American people have a hard time understanding what we're doing in, in London. Assume for a minute that you could come to my district and talk to some of my unemployed people and explain to them why it's in their interest to spend, for the American people to spend a billion dollars building a fortress in London when they are falling through the cracks and their, and their wages have gone down, the ones that have work, and work. See if you can relate to them and explain to them the importance of, in a way, you have to say, well, that billion dollars will have to be more debt because where are you going to save it? Could you explain that to these unemployed people? Well, Congressman, with respect to the embassy, um, we are selling 11 sites that we currently rent at very high cost in London to consolidate in one building, and therefore the money that we uh, gain from the sale of these uh, buildings um, will be used to fund the embassy. So we are not asking for additional or new money. And the reason we need a platform like that embassy in London is because we do so much work in every department of our government through London. Uh, it's not just our diplomats, but obviously every other part of the American uh, government is represented there. So I believe I can uh, make the case that we're not asking for new money on that. But I take very seriously your larger point, Congressman. Um, it breaks my heart that 10 years ago we had a balanced budget, that we were on the way to paying down the debt of the United States of America. I served on the Budget Committee in the Senate, and I remember as vividly as it were yesterday when we had a hearing in which Alan Greenspan uh, came and justified uh, increasing spending and cutting taxes saying that we didn't really need to pay down the debt. May, may I Outrageous, in my view. Excuse me. I would like to interrupt quickly ask you, is there any place in your budget that you could cut anything significant? We, we are cutting. A part of our problem is 
that we are now assuming so many of the post-conflict responsibilities, and that is, a, that is the bulk of our increase, uh, Congressman. Okay. Thank you. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Missouri.